A great audiobook can be music to your ears. A crappy audiobook can be like your mammy's favorite telenovela, campy, shrill, unrealistic, and embarrassingly over the top. I'm Corin Zelkis, the author of Smashed, Story of a Drunken Girlhood, and the brand new memoir, Fury, the audio version of which I narrated myself. This is my writer's rant about the worst kind of books on tape. I was a little bit wary when Penguin approached me and asked whether I'd be interested in reading the audio version of Fury. It wasn't a job that I took lately. Before I wrote Smashed, I wrote poetry exclusively. And as a poet, I've always firmly believed that a piece of writing doesn't come alive until it's read aloud, preferably with intensity, emotion, humor, pacing, restraint, and a careful consideration for rhythm. I loathe people who read prose flatly. I'm sure you've encountered this type of narrator. Either they do the robot, completely devoid of inflection, or else they strike rapt, superfluous pauses. They're like super church preachers, halting mid-sentence to give their sermons time to reach the congregates in the farthest pews. Alone in the car, I find myself hollering back at these narrators. Hello, you're supposed to be storytelling here, not reciting the phone book, not reading the word of God. But even worse than an aloof or overly serious narrator is the hokey one. I can't stand it when a narrator adopts a fake southern drawl or a preposterous British accent. I cringe when a male narrator reads the female parts too and affects a transvestite like warble in the process. If a grown adult reads a child's dialogue in an itty bitty baby voice, I press eject on the audio CD immediately. I even once threw a disc at the window. My list of pet peeves goes on. I have no patience for mispronounced words. What self-respecting New Yorker could bear to follow along to an audiobook in which the narrator repeatedly pronounces Houston Street as Houston Street? I also hate the elevator music that appears between the chapters of most audiobooks. When it came time to mix the audio version of Fury, I flat out refused to use any song that resembled something you'd hear in the aisles of the supermarket or in the YMCA locker room. We used a glorious song called Oh Forever by my husband's band Breaks. It sounds a bit foreboding, a bit like falling in love, and a bit like Jesus and Mary Chain. And if you're listening to the audiobook in your car, it certainly has the potential to make you drum your fingers against the steering wheel.